Hi everyone. Assertive discipline. Assertion discipline. In the context of teaching and learning. The teacher is the captain in a classroom. The teacher has a right. Similarly, the parent is the captain in the house. It is not an authoritative, uh, autocratic leadership, but it is a collaborative, democratic leadership. This is what we have seen so far. We also saw the interplay between attitude, feeling, emotions, parenting, right? All these things, right? Now, we saw in the previous episode that it trains the uh, uh, students a tripartite agreement. Let us move further. Develops a clear classroom discipline consisting of rules which the students must follow at all times when they follow they get a positive reinforcement when they do not follow they meet the consequence right so rules are set let's say that the teacher say at nine o'clock all of you should be in so you can write down five things. One is punctuality. The second one, anybody has got a doubt, you should raise your hands. When one person is speaking, other person cannot interfere, interrupt. Right. So when it is followed, positive reinforcement. When it is not followed, consequence. Right. These consequences should be escalated. That means there is a hierarchy of punishment. Even in the criminal law, the first offenders are uh, dealt with leniently, right? It's called um, the Probationary Offenders Act. Even on the road, when you are, um, uh, you know, what happens when you don't uh, follow the traffic signals, uh, immediately your license is not cancelled, right? So there is a hierarchy of consequences. That is the specially that is the specialization, that is the speciality of um, uh, assertive discipline. And assertive discipline also assumes students will misbehave. Now, let us think about it for a while. Which is natural? Discipline or indiscipline? When a child is born, when a baby is born, the baby does not look at the watch and decide to cry or not to cry. Right? The baby uh, uh, is not uh, uh, looking for uh, you know, time for uh, the natural call. The baby will refuse to eat. Indiscipline is natural. Discipline is learned. Discipline is taught. Similarly, a rock is natural. A statue is made. A forest is natural. A garden is designed. Please understand what I'm trying to say. So, it recognizes students will misbehave. Student must be forced to comply with rules. Quote and unquote forced. How? Through positive and negative reinforcements. Teachers have their needs, wants and feelings. Teachers have, have their own needs. As a teacher, I need to complete my portion. As a teacher, I have a right for your attention. And punishment will discourage students from breaking rules. See, the problem uh, in many society is lack of punishment. Supposing on the road, there is no police constable and even if police constable is there, he does not take note of uh, traffic offenders. What will happen? Right? So, there has to be an action and a consequence, right? So this is, these are the, some of the basic principles of assertive discipline. Now, there are two other things I thought in this episode I'll complete. So then the next episode I'll go deeper into them. There are two things you should uh, know. Positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. Maybe you can take down one more word, punishment. So positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement and punishment. Positive reinforcement is the process of encouraging or establishing 
a pattern of behavior by offering reward. You do this, I'll give this. Right? You do your homework, I'll uh, give you a reward. You control your uh, TV time, I will reward you. Positive reinforcement. So, any behavior which is rewarded will be reinforced. Negative reinforcement. In fact, this is uh, uh, the uh, Skinner's uh, uh, contribution by in the theory of apparent conditioning. Negative reinforcement, your response behavior is strengthened by stopping, removing or avoiding a negative outcome. Please understand. Many people mistake negative reinforcement as punishment. Now, if you want to avoid a consequence, you remove a behavior which is causing the consequence. That is the negative reinforcement. Negative reinforcement works to strengthen the behavior by removing the consequence. I will give an example. <clears throat> If you don't want to be caught in the traffic by the constable and find wear your helmet. Nobody wants to be caught. If you don't want a mark to be deducted for poor handwriting, do copywriting, handwriting. So the consequence of one mark being deducted, you don't like it, okay? Do handwriting. If you want a reward and I give you a reward for doing a thing, it is positive reinforcement. If you don't want a, a negative consequence, pain, punishment, what is that you should do? Do that. That behavior is reinforced and because of that, the consequence is avoided. So this is the difference between the positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. We will give more examples of this in the episode. Normally in my uh, workshop we do a lot of exercises to understand these concepts. In fact we ask the teachers to write down these five norms, five things to be followed in a classroom, five things to be avoided in a classroom. If you are not subscribed to the channel please do subscribe, press the bell button. And please post whatever uh, doubt or comments you may have in the comment box. We will try to answer. See you in my next episode. ABS Vidya Mandir, Tiruvallur.